What's poppin' T-Subs and T-Squad, and happy Monday to y'all, child. So, Basketball Wives, this is season 10, episode 15. Don't ask me what the name of the episode is, because they don't even damn know. So, Jack, I'm going to be real with y'all. I damn near forgot that it was Monday and it was coming on. So, it I, I only got reminded by this because I saw Scotty's tweet. And so this was like around 809, 810 ish or whatever. Then it was like a five minute commercial break. But from what I saw on Twitter, the first part of this was Jack Attack meeting with Duffy Duck. And she basically was telling her about what British has shared with her about the ladies thinking that her old ass is bored. And that's why she be meddling in their damn business all the time. And now she wants to have a pound of roasters basically to lay it all out on the line and basically she just want to hear from their mouth that they think that she's bored and that's why all of this is going on and they're not lying moving on we're gonna get to that in a minute so british meets with daddy long legs for drinks so daddy long legs is still upset with ghetto fat compton the hanging up on her when british had called her and daddy long legs said that she heard ghetto fat compton lost her house around dead atlanta or got foreclosed on One, we did all hear that tea. That is one. We did all hear that tea because that was the talk of the town back then when all of that came out. Um, so, you know, it just is what it is. But at the same time, Daddy Long Leg, ugh, I'm a, listen, I'm going to get on Daddy Long Legs at the end of this because this is another time and another season you coming up here with a damn rumor, with a rumor. And then you sitting up here want to give one to a bitch that don't mind hoiling and hoisting a table at you. Whatever. We'll get there when we get there. Um, so we get down to Duffy Duck and um, Ema, that, that boy she with. And um, they get to talking about marriage and how they've, they're they still engaged. I think they've been engaged for like two years. I think it's two years now that they've still been engaged and all the rest of this stuff. And then she goes down this whole diatribe about how this man ain't got no ambition and he need more ambition. And, you know, it's up to her to push him to have more ambition and da 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 And I'm just sitting here like, listen, Duffy. You may think that you own one, but the only thing that you're on, in my opinion, is basketball wives. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that, you know, you ain't being a DJ or whatever or whatever. But I mean, you, the gag is you a dish jockey. This man is a damn, what is he, an agent for the NBA? Like, how you going to look at this man in his face and tell him he need to have more ambition and he not doing this, that, and the third? I mean, I... <sighs> Ain't no way in hell some woman who got damn silver and, and, and pink zebra stripes designs in their head going to sit up here in my face and try to tell anybody that that they don't have no ambition or they need more of this or they need more of that. Like, I, whatever, Duffy. Anywho, Brooke takes Brandy and British to go and get it, her tattoo removed. And Brandy still feels like Brush is Brush. Brandy still feels like Brooke is making a hasty decision. Brandy, mind your damn business. Listen, you stayed with, with a known cheater that cheated on you with over 800 damn women. You stayed and put up with that. You can't get upset at her because it only took one time. So she say, for this to come out for her to want to skedaddle and hit the road, Jack, don't you come back no more. I mean, I, listen. If anything, I'm going up for Bro uh, for Brooke right now because she obviously don't need him, don't need the money, don't need the lifestyle, don't need this, don't need that. Cause she can get it on her own. So it, and, and they ain't even been together for that long. They ain't got no churn together. And so I do understand her side. Like, nah, I, I, nah, we ain't even about to start this. I, like, mind your business. Anywho. British tells them about Jack Attack wanted to have a Ponderosa and about what Daddy Long Legs spilled on Ghetto Fire Compton. It's obvious that Brandy does still love Ghetto Fire Compton in some aspect and in some capacity because she still gives a damn. 
um, because that really made her feel away when she had found that out. She won't hear for that at all. And, and you know, it, 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 I mean, and it, it's it's I would love to see them be back friends again. But because of the way things happen, I just know that ain't going to happen. But it would be nice, especially because we still see Brandy still care for this damn girl, because if she didn't, she wouldn't give a damn about none of that. I'm just going to be honest. Um, but we're going to move on. So Ghetto Fire Compton meeting with Duffy Duck down to do yoga. So Duffy Duck opens up to Ghetto Fire Compton um, about her situation with that boy she with. And Ghetto Fire Compton gives that. I will say this. Malaysia can and does give great advice when it calls for her to. But I just think there's this stigma around her and the other ladies really ain't, ain't going to pay attention to it. Or they'll probably listen to her, but they ain't going to let her know that they're listening, but they'll still take her advice because she actually gave her some real good advice, some real good, solid, sound advice. She did. I mean, I, I, I we got to be honest. She did. She gave her some really great advice, just like she gave Brooke some really great advice. I mean, she did. Um, but we're going to move on from that. So Jack Attack is getting into real estate and she called British to come around there to check out a piece of property that she wants to flip. I'm going to be real with you, Jackie. Uh, British hit the nail right on the head when she says, you obviously invited me to try. To, this is your cheap, cheap and empathetic attempt to prove to everybody or to prove to us that you're not bored and, and you're not this and you're doing this and you're doing that and you got this going on and so and so and so. She was absolutely right with that, Jack. Jackie. Listen, Jackie, I don't bit more believe that you ever going to be on a selling L.A., selling Tampa, selling Seattle, selling Washington, selling Montana, selling Utah, selling none of that. I just don't believe it. I don't buy it. I don't. I mean, listen, Dick em Down did the same shit. And what is she doing now? Petting the damn hats. So it's <laughs> so it's just like. I, <laughs> speaking of Jack Attack, we get down to this messy ass Ponderosa. Listen, this Ponderosa was very self-serving and it won't. It, it, I agree with Jennifer. It did remind you of a Jack Attack swap meet because that's all. That's all that was in there, child. A couple of books, a couple of late ass fashions, um, that Boussard liquor that ain't nobody but like girl, why do you still got Boussard liquor? That's how I know that shit ain't sale. You you got a lifetime supply. Ain't nobody buying it. Whatever, Jackie. Whatever. So Brooke tells the ladies about how she's going on ahead and going through her divorce from, you know, Steve Steve. I think his name is Steve. Um, getting her divorce from Steve or whatever the case may be. And uh, again, I'm not mad at her for doing it. I'm not. I'm not mad at her for doing it. Like at the end of the day, she don't need to stay in nothing that she don't think is going to be conventional for her. And, you know, to some people, cheating is a deal breaker. It's a, it's a one and done for some people. Not everybody is just going to stay and then until year 12 and after cheatation 1042 to decide to want to go on ahead and grow balls and leave. Y'all know like y'all she wrote mellow muppet. Moving on. Um, so Jack Attack walking in with these two security. <laughs> with these two security guards that look more like Usher number one and Usher number two standing at the day of door down to the coach church. That's really what they gave. But, um, the bitch, they might be two of Jackie cousins to let me tell it. Like, but again, Jackie needs purpose to be on this show and it has to make sense why she's here. So I'm just going to put up with it um, because girl, <laughs> whatever, Jackie. So Jackie decides to go down the, the list, the, the, the table and ask each of the ladies, do they feel like she meddles? And each and every last one of them says, yes, you do. You meddle a lot, even with all of your podcasts, even with all of your books, even with all of your fashions, even with all of this, even with all of the houses that you flipping. You're still you still got time to be messy and be meddlesome in all of our business. And even with everything that you got going on, you're bored. <laughs> you're bored. My thing about it is, Jackie, if you really had a whole bunch of going on like that, you wouldn't be sitting over here telling Malaysia how much you miss Doug and how much is this and how much is that. Girl, you'll be like, bitch, I'm glad he gone because now I got too much stuff to do. 
I'm, I'm... Fine, Jackie. So Jack Attack decides, decides to use that time to be messy again and go on ahead and try to get Daddy Long Legs and Ghetto Fire Compton and talk. I'm going to tell you something. Jackie was being really messy, but I would say it for the mess because it, 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 it kills me when Daddy Long Legs Giraffe Neck Jennifer wants to get up here and try to act like she's like she like she Big Ange or she Tommy. You know, or she hosteline or, or she, you know, she crashed to somebody and she and, 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 you know, like she's just this big, tough girl like that. I get Jackie's thing. It's like you could sit up amongst everybody else and have all of this smoke and rah, rah, rah. Well, he, here's your chance. Use your chance. <sighs> but listen again, when it comes to this thing about uh, Malaysia. Ghetto Fire Compton getting thawed out around there to Atlanta. Everybody done knew that. Everybody done heard that, child. It may have been new to y'all, but it won't new to us. I mean, it may have been new to y'all at that time, but we all knew it was something weird going on with Ghetto Fire Compton and, and, and her finances. We all knew that. We was speculating that back in season eight. Really, back in season seven. So, I mean, I, I, I wasn't shocked when that came out. Neither was half of the people that watched this show. So, I mean, yeah, it was messy that she threw that out there. But, I mean, it is what it is. Anywho, that's really all I got. I ain't got no more to give y'all. Tonight's episode, it was a key. It was a key. But I gave y'all the best that I got, and I ain't got no more to give y'all. Y'all drop down in the comments. Y'all let me know what y'all think about uh, Jack Attack Swap Meat Ponderosters. Um, let me know how y'all feel about Jennifer laying that level of tease. Like, do y'all feel as though she need to be going back down that road? Because it, it, it might be another table hoisted at her ass. And this time, I feel like it might connect. <laughs> Not that I hope that. Y'all know I, I don't condone no violence or no any kind. Anywho, that's all I got. I'm gone. And yeah, if you don't see me, don't look for me. Bye.